Hey, I'm John Reed, and today we're going to be hitting some tennis serves. Um, I like to do this because if you play tennis recreationally, most of the time serves are neglected and you just hit back and forth. And when people do serve, the form is unbelievably wrong. So we're going to help that today. Um, golf and tennis are probably the two sports that you can play your whole life and still not be very good at. So hopefully we're going to try to fix that. Uh, when I start, I like to warm up, and it's really good with kids because a lot of kids haven't played tennis before, but most all kids have played football. So if you just have them start on the service line, or sorry, the baseline back here, and just have them kind of work on that shoulder turn, and a lot of it's the same motion. It's that throwing motion. It gets their arms warmed up. It helps get their hips start turning into the serve, which is where a lot of the power comes from. The first thing we're going to look at is the grip. This is where a lot of people go wrong. I'm going to come in close here so you can see. A lot of people do the frying pan grip. You get a good shot on that. It's called the frying pan grip because this is how you would work a frying pan making pancakes. All right, we're going to change that and go into something called the continental grip. It's the same grip you would use for a volley. The continental grip, you're going to, so if, if you want to come down here with me, this is the grip you'd use for a forehand, which is most people serve with, okay? The correct grip is the continental grip. We're going to take it over about a quarter turn. All right, let's do that one more time. A quarter turn, and the correct way you can know if you're in this grip is you pretend your left hand's a nail and you're hammering it in. Again, with a forehand grip, this would feel really funny. Your elbow would have to tweak like this. So you take it like this, pretend it's a hammer. Hammer grip or continental grip? Hammer grips works really well for kids. So now we got the correct grip. Let's go to stance is the next point. We're going to go in order here. We're going to go with grip, stance, then we're going to work on toss, contact, and follow through. It's really just that simple. Uh, a common mistake again with the grip, we talked about if it was in a frying pan way. If you just play recreationally or just for fun, you know what I'm talking about. Most people's first serve, they stand where? With their shoulders facing their opponent toss right here. Notice how I'm not going to get any torque with my hips because they're already facing my opponent and they just kind of throw it up and try to slam it in. No spin, maybe some speed, not a lot of consistency which is what we're after. And then second serve, we all know what does that turn into? The hips back and the pop up to get that thing in. A lollipop and they'll kill it back. So we're going to try to correct that. We have our new grip, the hammer grip, the continental grip. Now I want you to notice that my feet are direct, lined up directly want to come behind me here a sec and watch how my feet are going to be lined up directly with the net post. Again, with the football analogy, when I'm throwing a football, if my opponent's over there, I wouldn't stand facing him. To get my shoulder into it, to get my hips into it, I'd stand, if you want to notice now, how my left foot, my right foot, both toes are pointing directly at that net post over there. And that way when I throw, it allows my whole body to get into the motion, create a lot more force. Your upper body's powerful, but not nearly as powerful as your lower body, so you want to incorporate them all into the serve. So we got our grip. If you want to come back in front of me here, and you can see the whole thing put together, we're going to start now with the grip, and now we got our stance, we're going to work on the toss. Toss hand out in front of you. Old grip, all right, here's our new grip. Toss hand's going to start out in front of you. Keep a pretty steady wrist. A lot of people get wristy and they start throwing it all over the place, behind them, in front of them. If you hold it like an ice cream cone, then you can go straight up and your wrist won't affect your toss as much. So here we go. Grip. Stance. Toss is going to be out in front of me so I can lean into it. Boom, right there. A good way to practice this is to line up the butt of your racket with the baseline and you're in the correct stance. If you can hit, your racket, that's perfect. That way you won't be chasing your toss. Right there. You can hit that racket almost every time. Now we're going to work on the take back. Again, much like a throw, I'm going to start this way so I can get my hips into that throw and create all this torque and momentum with my hips versus just throwing out my arm. Grip. Stance. We just worked on that toss. It goes up here. I'm going to come around contact point. This is a huge part of a correct serve. Most people's contact point is a solid pop. All right, I want you to come in here and look at how I'm going to hit this ball. I'm actually going to be hitting up on it, which is a common misconception in tennis. A lot of people think serves up high, so you have to hit down on it. To hit down on a serve, you have to be seven feet, nine inches tall. Okay, so we're, none of us are that tall, so we're going to try to hit up on the ball. So as my racket comes through with this new grip, you can brush up on it 
And that's how all these guys, Andy Roddick, Roger Federer, they create all this massive spin and all the speed. All right, so we're gonna hit up on the ball. Watch that one more time. I'm actually gonna, the word we use is bypass. I'm gonna bypass the ball. That's gonna create some top spin to help it come into the court. Show that step real quick. I'm just gonna stop because we're not on the follow through yet. Right now, all we have is we have the grip, the stance, the toss, and now contact, and I'm gonna freeze it right there. So instead of this pop straight forward, you can hear I'm brushing up on the ball. A few more. I'm just freezing my racket right there. This is again very similar to football because my hand, we've heard um, Coach Zabrowski talk about the hand pronating. It's another word you use it in football and you use it in tennis. The hand actually pronates, which means your wrist snaps out and your thumb comes down. It's a very little known fact about serving, but that's where all that snap comes from. And you can see my wrist comes down like this. And now the next part, the follow through, before we put it all together, it's gonna come to the opposite side of my body. And then just like a pitcher, if you, when you know when a pitcher pitches, he gets through here, opposite side, and then his foot comes around so he's ready for the play. Now you're gonna be ready for the point, okay? So I'm going to do a few slow-mo here, one more time, watch again how I'm actually hitting up on the ball, ready for the play. If you want to come get behind me here, get a different view at it, very important if you ever take a lesson, make sure that the teaching pro gives you a lot of different views on how this ball is going over. Get the card out of the way. Time. Again, this is a really consistent way to get the serve in. Let's just watch two more serves here. Common mistake if you want to come in front of me one more time. Here's the old grip, and we'll show the contrast between the two different serves, okay? Here's the old grip, the old stance, okay? This is what most people do just to get it in. Effective, maybe, but you're never really going to get better. Okay, so what do we learn now? We're gonna get and do our new grip, the hammer grip. Stance, feet right at the net post. Toss, just a little bit out in front of me so I don't have to chase it. Point of contact, brushing up on it, pronation, and finally the follow through is opposite side of the body. So here's the old serve. Here's our new and improved serve. And that's how you serve. Thanks.